Throughout human history, countless kings and emperors ascended to the throne, each leaving their own unique mark on the annals of history. However, among them, there was one who was remembered not only for his might or conquests. He was a king who fearlessly rode into battle, never wavering in his duty to defend his people, even as illness gripped his body. History remembers him not by his name, but by his title, the Leper King. Baldwin IV of Jerusalem, despite his affliction, demonstrated his strength, courage, and strategic brilliance, challenging great leaders like Saladin. His story is not just the tale of a king, but the legend of a spirit that triumphed despite the suffering, a true testament to victory through perseverance. Baldwin IV was born in 1161 as the only son of King Amalric I of Jerusalem. His birth was of great significance for the future of the Kingdom of Jerusalem, and therefore Baldwin was raised from a young age as the future king. The importance placed on his education was extraordinary. Specifically, one of the most renowned historians of the Middle Ages, William of Tyre, took a close interest in the young prince's education. William provided Baldwin with in-depth lessons on history, diplomacy, the art of governance, and Christian ethics. Until the age of nine, Baldwin's life progressed like that of a normal child, until one day his teacher and caretaker William of Tyre noticed something strange. That day, Baldwin and his friends were playing a game, scratching each other's arms with their nails, trying to inflict pain. While the other children naturally writhed in pain, Baldwin's arms were scratched until they bled, yet he felt no pain. William immediately informed Baldwin's father, King Amalric Wunt, about the situation and warned him that it could be a sign of a serious illness. However, King Amalric dismissed it, saying, a real man doesn't feel pain, and didn't take the condition seriously. The doctors also didn't pay much attention to the issue, and Baldwin's illness went undiagnosed until he was 13 years old. When Baldwin turned 13, his father, King Amalric Wurst, passed away. The young Baldwin, still a child, ascended to the throne of the Kingdom of Jerusalem. Historical depictions of Baldwin's coronation at age 13 show his face clearly. However, after this ceremony, his face was never seen by anyone again, because it was discovered that Baldwin had leprosy. The disease progressed rapidly during his adolescence, causing his skin to deteriorate and decay. King Baldwin IV had to live with this illness for the rest of his life. From that point on, he lived his life with his body completely covered in garments and gloves that concealed his hands. The king, hidden behind his mask, never showed his face again. Yet this did not stop him from being a warrior, nor from being a king. Behind the mask, Baldwin became a legend, one who defended his people and struck fear into the hearts of his enemies. In those years, leprosy was known among the people as God's curse and was believed to be contagious, causing those afflicted to be ostracized by society. Leprosy patients were condemned to live a lonely life, separated from others. However, when the victim of this curse was none other than King Baldwin IV of Jerusalem himself, the nobles and the people of Jerusalem could no longer voice their concerns. Everyone believed that the young king's illness would quickly progress, leading to his death, and that someone else would soon take the throne. With these expectations, Jerusalem was ruled by regents until Baldwin IV reached the age of 16. However, the greatest threat to the kingdom of Jerusalem was a force far greater than the young king's illness, Saladin. Saladin, with his military genius and ruthless strategies, was a powerful leader who united the Islamic world under one banner, setting his sights on Jerusalem. He was not only a warrior who struck fear into the hearts of his enemies, but also a dark shadow looming over all the Crusader kingdoms. Saladin, who unified the Muslim world, shook his enemies with every move, and even the mention of his name inspired fear. Even the strongest leaders of the West realized the difficulty of waging war against him for Saladin's might lay not only in the size of his armies, but in his relentless will. Due to the king's condition, Raymond III, one of the throne claimants, signed a peace treaty with Saladin. However, when Baldwin IV turned 16, he consolidated all the power of the state in his hands and dismissed the regents. And then he declared war against Saladin. Upon learning that Saladin was patrolling his borders, King Baldwin marched with his army of 5,000 men towards Saladin. Saladin's army, however, numbered around 25,000. Saladin's goal was to attack the cities of Ramla, Lydda, and Arsuf. Believing that King Baldwin's 5,000 soldiers following him wouldn't dare to attack, Saladin left a portion of his forces behind and continued advancing. Later, perhaps underestimating the 16-year-old leper king, Saladin divided his remaining army into three groups, ordering simultaneous attacks on the three cities. 
Baldwin, however, would not let this opportunity slip away. First, Baldwin attacked the forces Saladin had left behind, securing a decisive victory with his heavily armored Templar knights. Then Baldwin began to pursue Saladin. The Crusader forces caught up with Saladin near Manjisar, close to Ramla. The Ayyubids, exhausted after a long march, were unprepared for battle. Without delay, King Baldwin of Jerusalem launched a full frontal assault against Saladin with all his might. In the ensuing Battle of Manjisar, Saladin and his army were utterly routed, suffering a devastating defeat. Only Saladin's elite guard units remained with his army, and Saladin barely escaped with his life. The mighty Sultan Saladin, who had never lost a battle, was so impressed by the courage of the 16-year-old leper king that he remarked, Here stands a true king. In Jerusalem, the leper king, whom no one believed in and who was expected to die within a few years, had achieved a magnificent victory against a great leader like Saladin. After this event, Baldwin became known as the protector and hero of Jerusalem, earning the respect of all. Though the condition of the leper king worsened over the years, and despite the pain, he never hesitated to lead his army into battle each time dot their final encounter took place at the siege of Karak. Baldwin's stepsister Isabella was set to marry a castle commander, and the wedding was to take place at Karak Castle. The event was filled with festivities and fairs, creating a lively atmosphere, with all the local crusader leaders in attendance. Saladin had heard about this wedding and saw it as a great opportunity. He quickly gathered his forces and set off towards Karak Castle. At this time, Baldwin was very ill, 23 years old, and his skin had practically begun to deteriorate. He could barely stand or walk. As a result, he did not attend his sister's wedding. Saladin had besieged the castle and started attacking. The situation was immediately reported to King Baldwin IV of Jerusalem. Upon learning that Saladin had besieged the castle, Baldwin, despite his fatal condition, rose from his bed and immediately ordered his army to prepare for battle. Baldwin's condition was so dire that he was nearly blind, unable to move his hands, and incapable of mounting a horse. As a result, he was carried to Karak Castle by his soldiers, lying in a bed at the head of the army, and Baldwin began attacking from behind Saladin. Seeing this, Saladin realized he was caught between the army at Karak Castle in front and Baldwin's forces behind, and he began to retreat. This journey was the final chapter in the Leper King's story. At just 23 years old, he had twice defeated the undefeated Saladin, carving his name into history. Baldwin's severe illness worsened significantly after this campaign, and shortly after returning to Jerusalem, he passed away due to leprosy. Dot, and no one ever defended Jerusalem as he did. Saladin conquered Jerusalem just three years after Baldwin's death, 